All right, guys. Uh, tonight we are going to do another round of analysis. Joining me tonight is current leaderboard, first place, Tragow. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. I was watching this match of live, and it was it was really interesting to see the adaptations that happened between both of you in both build and also play style. It was I I. I I'm not a fan of playing against the scimitar. I love using it. Not a fan of playing it against it. So it was interesting uh, to have to be forced to play against it. Uh, right here, the rule set. I like the first to five. Um, yeah. And if you take a look at the rule set, I think you'll agree that they're very bland. Um, <laughs> this was so. one of our most bland uh, grudge sets. Mm -hmm. And I think it came from not uh, playing too much with TJ. So I didn't really know what to try to sneak in there to my advantage or try to sneak away from him yeah. to his disadvantage. So I figured middle of the road was probably the best way to go there. Absolutely. But getting into game one, first uh, we'll talk a bit about TJ's build. TJ is currently running a Scimitar Aegis build where the whole idea is to get one extremely long combo as he can link in Scimitar into the stun from Aegis, but also having the Volt Tracer dash to get some electrified procs to extend it just to barely get that scimitar back out. Yeah, and they work perfectly. I think the cooldowns are like perfect timing to if you can link them, you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of it. That that shield is always available when you need it. Um, once he gets me in that combo and if he pulls off enough basics, that shield's gonna pop up, bang, stun again, back into the dash, and then loop it. And then you can you can pull one one combo and kinda get it. Yeah. Unfortunately, in game one, he wasn't feeling too certain on how to deal with that win sentry and ran directly at it. So I think that is lost. one of the keys to my build is this win sentry. The win sentry does so much work. Uh, it cuts off a huge portion of the map. Um, I love using it to sort of get in and around those statues um, to sort of uh, chase them out the other side where I'm waiting to you know launch the attack. Um, also, to get out of the corner, when I'm being pushed into the corner, I can sort of use it as a, uh, a front line and then run behind it while it gives me a little bit of cover fire, almost literally. Kind of there, trying to pull that right there. Yeah. Uh, you play a really good game of keep away here, just barely staying outside that Aegis range. And that's, and that's from TJ Brown, one of which the is things that... Biggest, that's the biggest threat to TJ's build. Now, right there, actually... Um, as you were shooting out that Inferno Beam, he did uh, a weird tech with Aegis, where you can actually immediately dash out of it. Um, totally unexpected. And, Every, he yeah. did it a few times. I wasn't aware of how that movement worked. And at first, uh, you know, right there. And it completely throws me off. Uh, he yeah. is not where I expect him to be. He just appears. It's, it's not the easiest thing to pull off, and you can definitely mess it up. But it works really well with his build. As that Voltracer dash, if he Aegis is near you and then Voltracers are directly onto you, you don't have enough reaction time to do anything. You just have to prepare for it. And it's insanely fast. You can use it in different directions and is a very huge threat. The biggest issue that comes with it is you lose out on both the shield, the actual shield health of Aegis, and also the stun of it. That's why he yes. has to use that Voltracer dash effectively with it, because if not, he's just dashing next to you with no hitbox, and now you get a free combo. Yes, free and I think with the signature scimitar, he's putting himself in line where it's like, it's right there, I'm going to get rid of everything except the scimitar, that's all I need, and sort of, you know, uh, land that scimitar and start that combo. Um, it's definitely a big gamble, but it, I think it's a big, he does get a lot of movement, and there definitely is an element of surprise with it, because... Once you see the shield come out, you expect it to be a certain way. Then all of a sudden, he's not there, and then you're ready for him to be somewhere else, and he's not. I think it. Um, I think the element of surprise definitely gets... Right here, we get a perfect showing of this combo. He just barely clicks you Rocks. with the shield, and 
gets the continuous scimitar into Volt Tracer dashes. Barely gets Aegis up to continue another loop and kill you from full. From right. Left. And that's that's the danger of it. It's like at no point am I fully safe from that combo. Yeah. Uh, I could have full for uh, 500 health. Um, and as you'll see, I mean, you can you can see how long the match takes as a whole. Um, both playing these mid-range builds, and and we've been talking about this like fencing aspect. You know, it's not a slugfest. It's more like, you know, jumping in, fainting, uh, bluffing, and funneling just to get your op opponent to expose a flank to try and pull that combo off. Yeah. And that's why these matches sort of go on. We're both sort of doing the exact same thing. Aqua Beam, got to pick that up. Yeah, right Make here we a see little very <laughs> underhanded, important. but you got to you got to try and win. <laughs> yeah, you see a very important part of pickup pickups importance and something that TJ Brown absolutely struggles with. He is able to land this combo pretty consistently. In practice, he was able to get him many times just get it off for, on me for almost 400, 500 damage, even when I had a frame one option such as um, uh, Heroic Blaze. It, it's, but it's, it's he, very much shows, he very much shows struggles on the part of Asp of Arcana pickups. I Is think it's a, it's a big, uh, it's, it's definitely a big portion of the game. You need to complete that build, and especially when these builds are pretty similar. Um, yeah. You know, uh, they only they differ with the you know the support arcana, um, and then it's fun uh, interesting to note that I changed out my dash here. So what did you? Yeah, think I wanted to ask you change? about um, about why you went with this. Personally, I think that your ignition rush was a much better choice into his build because he wants to dash directly on top of you. You see it right there. You see it every single time yes. he's able to land that combo. <laughs> that bull tracer has to go right on top of you because it has a very small AOE and the. That shield that you get is super crucial. He has to play around that, especially if you get it off right before he hits that combo. He has to be very careful with what he uses. And here we yeah. see good Twitten Turbines pick up from him that really is just going to help zone off. I was I was upset that I wasn't the one to grab that. As soon as I see that out there, uh, you know, that that's a major completion. That's going to complete the build. Uh, I've got this Surge Anchor here. I'm okay with it. I like using it right here for the combo. The scimitar doing its job. Another scimitar right there. Oh, Another oh, surge man. anchor, but I think right here is a perfect reversal. He and then that really yeah. well. Gets good combo, but he's unable to finish it off. And I think here. And then I totally. Oh, he gets. That's it. Game over. Yeah. With 19 health left. A lot of these matches went um, down to just HP. They went. Uh, these matches went uh, full count, one and one, and then it came down to HP. Yeah. So um, the result definitely doesn't um, uh, reflect how close these matches were or how close the match was as a whole. Yeah. Um, right right here you see a big weakness of TJ Brown. He had a prime opportunity to get that knockout boulder. Yes, I was surprised Carter, he didn't go, go more aggressively for it. Yeah, that's just one of his biggest weaknesses as a player currently. Which if he's able to do, he can really make this build threatening because he doesn't have the range to start up the combo effectively, even with the Aegis Charge Volt Tracer. It doesn't have as much range as as um, a drill. The splitters are good, but they're not the Knockout Boulder. This Knockout Boulder, Aqua Beam, Knockout Boulder right there. It's got a huge hitbox. And I just outspelled him there. I had, I had two very good pickups, and that was going to make it tough for him to do, especially when the with the Aegis Shield, you do have to kind of get close to initiate that combo. Um, it's not restricted to having to uh, initiate it with the shield. He can initiate it with the scimitar just as easy. But uh, both of my options are, you know, medium to almost a, a little bit longer than medium range with that wind sentry. Yeah, you're gonna have a very good time zoning him off, especially with wind sentry. Mm. And then the mirror of scimitars is probably actually more favorable towards you, just because scimitars break up on each other, which matters more to him. I was able to cancel them out, and having something like a wind sentry that can't be broken, and being able to sneak through, and and that um, concept will appear in the next match, or maybe the the one after, when uh, we both do a little bit of editing to our builds. Yeah. Um. So to go back to that dash, and I switched it again back to this wave front, and I felt I started to do a little bit better with the wave front. I agree with you. With the ignition rush was probably way better than the poison. Um. The reason for the poison was I was trying to get 
something to break up his combo should I get stuck into it. Not, <laughs> I think the Ignition Rush was doing a much better job than the Poison. The Poison, I don't think, did much. And once I switched to this wave front, it was more for uh, more engaging. But here's where we both switched drills. Yeah. You see that? We swapped, we swapped to TJ Brown running what you were running game one, which is the Volt Tracer, Ignition Rush, uh, Scimitar, Wind Fury, while you swapped to one of your older builds, which is Mini Drills plus Scimitar. And keeping and the wave front and vault tracers. Keeping or, the wave front, I liked it for again to keep with the. I was doing okay with it in terms of um, engaging, throwing that wave that wave dash out there. And once he brought out the the sentry, I did take a little bit to try and think. All right, how do I want to play this? It is very hard to play against wind sentry. And when I decided on the drills, it's because these drills can't be broken by the wind sentry. I can still sort of have the same exact. Uh, uh, the the combo where I have I'm able to st stun him and stop him with those drills and those drills can get past uh, his wind sentry they can't get past the scimitar or um or his uh or his uh, volt disc oh, I believe will break it but I don't think he's going to be going for it yeah Maybe he's not the about the sentry it's not one to throw out volt discs in neutral to block mm -hmm, yeah. correct yeah we don't see too much of that actually in these ma in any of our matches, really, where we just see uh, basics thrown out in neutral. It's There's a lot of running around and positioning that we more of see. Yeah, I think uh, the the basics from neutral will be, I think, more in uh, a melee versus a melee build, a pure melee build, like the uh, Zephyr Drill. When you feel the drill is coming on you without the Zephyr, you can turn around and spam your basic in, in hopes to stop it in its tracks. Uh, maybe a player like Jackson or or Scary Jack, uh, who both run the drill. Um, Riptide, the one that you run, does do that. And you, you do do that uh, using the basic and neutral to take out projectiles, which I, could be here to break I any drill, I believe. it's just important to keep out that hitbox, especially against uh, drills here. The fact that drills, if you're not using them with the statue to get a longer, act a longer activation time, they're going to come out really fast and it's a bit harder to react to them, so having yeah, they are smaller. Having even just one basic out at all times is really helpful against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here, you can see the, uh, here we just see a bit of dancing around and small combos happening, but you're able to get a decently strong scimitar combo off and barely nip him with the drills, which deal a lot of damage. A quick think on the fading pedal to finish off that round, giving you the win. And that's usually where the downfall is. You try and go for those style finishes, and it's like the the easy one is going to get you the win. Sometimes it's like if you try and get too fancy, right here, another good pickup. This right here is interesting. These campfires. Campfires the help a lot in this build because you're already having pretty good area denial and zoning, but something that's really helpful with them is scimitar pulling into them. Now, you can see it throwing IV enhanced on this field, which I think actually could have been pretty helpful for TJ Brown's build, especially since yes. it's even more stun frames. Again, Aqua Vortex, also a really good pickup, but he just decides to avoid them to go with his, his tried and true. That he Very good pickups for him, you're right, because he can go Aegis Shield, Aqua Vortex, Aqua Vortex, and then uh, Soaring IV if he really wants, dash through double scimitars, Volt Disc, and that's probably a one-hit combo right there. Oh, if absolutely. you can run all of those. Any, um, anything that extends his combo game with that build is going to be very useful. Those, there's a nice denier uh, right here of, of oh, him absolutely. trying to get close Artist, to Cardus Prime. Cardus Prime is such a game-ender for his build because he has to wait until Cardus Prime is completely over before he can go for his dash. He can only get in with Aegis Charge. But even then, I'll take some better. damage, but and he does a real good job of walking me away, walking me yeah. away, then zipping through that's the perfect really timing when it's gone. Yeah, he played he played this perfectly, but he dashed perfectly. away, which was his biggest issue, and he probably would have been able to finish off the kill. But right here, you're able to see him walk away and keep up those full discs while you're in some. Yeah, kill. so it it made him it made him play his combo, but very different. Instead of dashing through and pushing in, he was pulling and pulling that scimitar walk, which he can do. But I can't. So he's got the mouse and keyboard, so he's got a different movement where he can walk away, turn around, and instantly basic while he's sort of I, kiting me very smoothly. Yeah, I've I've tried doing the Scimitar walk on mouse, and, on mouse and keyboard on controller, and it is much easier on controller. But here's another point where you saw a bit of weakness and not knowing exactly with his build. 
he decided to dash more to the side to make sure he avoids the scimitar, but it would have been completely better for him to just dash through and get the kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then now I've got 16 health, he's got almost a full bar, and then this is a lot of dodging and dash, and he's yeah. super you, you aggressive get here. By one thing is effectively death, but a scimitar combo yeah. can do work. And boom, you take out half of his current HP. He's down to 170, which he's really feeling the heat at this point. He slows down. The momentum yeah. switch, <laughs> definitely. Him slowing down right here absolutely killed him there because he didn't realize the drill, and you're able to pick up the win on this. Another one of the biggest things with those drills is they do take out the corners as a sort of hiding place, just like Wind Sentry. Um, and that's why, I li that's why I like to go between those two because when you're playing this sort of uh, fencing uh, match where you're jumping in, you're getting aggressive, then you're pulling back, and you're it, that corner is it, the best place to hide, but it's also the worst place to get caught. And something like a sentry is going to, you know, evacuate that corner. Uh, the drills will also, you know, uh, make the player want to either get out of that corner or, you know, come up with some other way to creatively uh, get ready to fight. But those drills being able to go through that statue turns that into a, a huge pin spot that if you can pull it off, it's you're going to have an advantage getting right in there. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, that was... Uh, two very similar builds, mid-range. Mine was more mid-range to distance, and I guess how would you classify that? Uh, those two. I would, builds, if you had I would to classify TJ Brown's main Aegis Charge Scimitar build is a mid-range combo build. It's trying to look for that scimitar and just keep a combo expended for as long as possible. While with yours, with the Wind Sentry Scimitar, it felt more like a zoning build. You didn't, you weren't trying to fish Scimitars to get an extremely long combo, you are trying to fish Scimitars as a way of denying a huge amount of area. Especially with Wind Sentry doing that job really well. You put them in a pincer, and that's really what you're looking for. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a perfect read. That's exactly what it was, I, and yeah. Um, so it's it's funny to see that you can run the same signature, you can run the same signature dash and switch the build up by a standard, and then all of a sudden you've got a completely different build. And uh, over the past couple of you know uh, over the past week we were playing with new players, talking about new ideas. Uh, they were talking about player expression and how you can take these things and tweak them just a little bit and really change the way that you play this game. And in terms of player expression, I mean, what what do you think about that? I think that player expression is something that's really being seen in this game because everyone who's been playing for a, over a week is playing different styles even though we see so many scimitars and it really is prevalent currently. We see a lot of scimitars and most people are using them in a different way and going for something different as their build. We have TJ Brown with this combo. You just playing a zoning build that's mid-range and wanting to just deny as much area as possible. We have Flonby who's currently practicing an Aqua Beam Scimitar where it's just you have Aqua Beam to deal as much damage and keep your opponent as far away as possible. Then they want to come in and you Scimitar for that free damage to get in if on sloppy entries. By changing one or two things up and it's a completely different completely different play style and it's interesting to see players who love or hate one thing or another and there are certain spells where they just become personalized to the other player and even if they are as good uh it's just that okay i know that's a great way to play but i want to do it my way you know i still want to do it but i want to do it my way and then sticking to that and then working around it sometimes there are you know the limitations are shown uh you know you you're not going to get all the way across the the map with uh, a scimitar. It's only going to get you X amount of distance, um, but you're going to compensate that distance with the way that you maneuver, the footwork, the dashing, the you know close in, close you know popping in and out, and 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 you know bringing these builds alive with the way that you play and the way you bring it to the game. And I think that's probably one of the most interesting parts about this game and, and where I would find it very hard for the gameplay to get stale, especially uh, the more and more players who do, you know, jump in and, and start to start to join and, and, and play. Absolutely. And, uh, <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, we're going to yeah. see with new players coming in, we're going to see a lot of Arcana that we don't see right now and it's some of them it's not going to work sadly, but some Arcana that's still waiting around it's a giant it's a diamond in the rough we're gonna yeah. see it work real well 
You're, yeah, you're right. Like the the poison dash, that's something that came out like a couple of weeks ago that sat on the shelf for the longest time, and then all of a sudden somebody showed that it had some, you know, it was viable in certain situations in breaking up up, up those uh, combos, installing some jumps or stuffing an aqua beam, or you know stuff like that. Uh, the the vault tracer dash that TJ was using that sat on the shelf for a while, where it's like, why would you use that when you've got circuit line or you got ignition rush? And then all of a sudden he showed us why because you can. You can have a full, you know, uh, a, a zero to five hundred combo, and without any sweat, with just a couple, it, a couple button pushes. I would not say without any sweat. It is hard to pull off. You have to make sure that you really are managing those cooldowns well, <coughs> and the distance too. Scimitar, Scimitar the matters. Too. Um, Scimitar is one of those arcanas that it's really annoying to fight. But the thing is, when using Scimitar, there is so much more that you have to think about than just throwing it out comparatively to other arcana it is true it, it does give you a lot of options where you know uh i really enjoy throwing it and then when i'm getting pursued being able to sort of jump back and forth and sort of kind of guide it backwards and try and get it to come up from behind and every now and then you can get like a free escape route even if you're in mid combo you can get that little you know knowing how the movement works knowing how the scimitar is then going to come back around. You can steer it while you're moving, and and though I I, I think that that uh, makes it one of the more interesting things to use, uh, and that's why I like using it because I feel it's so flexible. Zoning, uh, stun locking. Um, I feel having two charges makes it super strong, and uh, and and again the way that you can use it defensively when you've got someone actively pursuing you too. It opens up a lot of. You know, it makes the gameplay flexible, and that's that's why I prefer using that. What? Yeah, every uh, every new player that comes is going to add something new, and uh, so I mean uh, that was some really in-depth analysis on this on this game, uh, and I think that we've got a lot out of it. I think there's still more to unpack. I think we can still run through this for another half an hour and find even more things to talk about, but uh, I think we should probably open up something else and take a look at it and. You know, and, and give you guys something else to look at. Um, Champ, thank you. Number one spot, top of the leaderboard. Uh, we got half the season we'll going. So, we'll, uh, see if it stays. we'll see if it stays. Yeah, yeah, well. Or the champ, to, I take my rightful trophy. That's right. Well, halfway there. Let's see. We'll, let's see. Let's see how the rest of the season unfolds. So, thank you very much for your uh, your, your in depth analysis. And, uh, guys, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Drag out. Hey. Anything to sign off? Uh, check my YouTube channel. I'll eventually post something. <laughs> we'll post that up there for you guys too. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one.